yeah, I think it'll be fun. Um, okay, I think we can start now. I'll be admitting people as and when they come. Um, so yeah, uh, okay, once again, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, so today's workshop is about Telegram bots. As I was saying, I love Telegram bots. I think they're very easy to make. And I think you can do a bunch of things with them considering how many people use Telegram these days. Uh, so I'm very excited for the workshop. I hope you are. Uh, and to conduct the workshop, we have uh, two people from MasterCard. First one is Ruchin, who is a specialist in the data engineering and analytics team in MasterCard. He joined MasterCard right after graduation and develops data pipelines and uh, a lot of data engineering work. Uh, yeah, and he has been the co-author of a winning entry in a Facebook developer challenge which is also about a chatbot. So that's great, yeah. Uh, so I think he knows quite a bit about chatbots. So if you have questions, feel free to ask him. Yeah, uh, so let's reach in. Uh, the second person is Zong Xian, who is a technical product manager in the data engineering and analytics team. Uh, he recently joined MasterCard and with a background in both technical and the business field, he brings a holistic perspective to products. So if you're someone who is interested in how technical product engineering works. You can drop him some questions if you want. Yeah, uh, so these are going to be our two speakers for today's, instructors for our today's workshop. Uh, and yeah, uh, I think we can start now. So uh, I'm not sure who will be sharing screen, uh, Songsen or Rachin. So, or Sinhao, I think Sinhao is starting with some yeah, intro. I'll, I'll be, um... Hi, Ram. My, my name is uh, Sing Hao, right? So, so I will be just doing a very quick overview of uh, MasterCard just to get uh, everyone to know um, what MasterCard is as a company, what we do before we dive into the workshop proper. So awesome. uh, am I able to, to share my screen, please? Yeah, yeah. let me shop, stop sharing my screen. Uh, I think you should be able to start sharing it now. Uh, by the way, participants, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type it on the chat and we'll, the instructors will get back to answering it as soon as possible. Yep. <coughs> Are you seeing my... I'm able uh, to see it, now? yes. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Point slide? Okay. Is it in full mood now? Yep. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yep. Yeah, All right. Is. Great. Okay. Okay. Sorry, a bit of uh lag on my end. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this uh, workshop conducted by Mastercard. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone as well. Uh, my name is Sing Hao from Mastercard. I've been in the company for about two and a half years. Uh, and uh, today I'll be just uh, starting off the presentation here to give everyone a very quick overview of MasterCard, uh, what we do and you know, just to get uh, everyone a good sense of our company before we dive into the workshop. If you have any questions along the way, just feel free to drop them in the Q&A box or chat box. Um, I guess we can address them during the Q&A segment right at the end of the session. Okay, so... I'm sure everyone of you have heard about MasterCard, right? MasterCard um, is a global technology company that uh, enables payments to be safe, simple, secure, and smart as well. So our vision is really a world beyond cash. Our greatest uh, you, you might think that it might be the other payments uh, network like Visa, or JCB, Amex, etc. But really, everyone has only one clear competitor, which is cash. You know, we want to make payments digital. We want to digitize um, all forms of payment mode. And hence, we want to reduce the amount of cash that is used in society nowadays. And our mission is simple as well. Uh, we are focused on every day, everywhere, on using our technology and expertise to make uh, payments uh, very seamless and very easy to use as well. So that's us. We are more of a global payments technology company rather than a credit card company, which most of you might know us as. And, and 
Although Mastercard is very well known, it's actually the 12th recognized brand in the world. Many people think that we are a credit card company, like I mentioned, but we're actually a payments technology company uh, within this entire fintech space. So our organization really brings colleagues from various functions together to work towards accomplishing this overall mission statement that we have. So just a very quick look of uh, the locations where we operate. Uh, as you can see, we are quickly growing uh, very rapidly with more than 20 20,000 employees globally. We're working in close to 11 business units that operate across our global footprint and we are making a local impact on five continents that each holds as a regional headquarters. So for Singapore, we are the regional headquarters for the entire Asia Pacific. And our colleagues work more than in 130 uh, office locations across the world as well to support the growth of our business in over 210 countries and territories. So as you can see, we have a very, very huge uh, scope and presence across the world. And that's how we actually scale our business through a lot of partnerships with the government, with a lot of digital wallets, with a lot of fintechs, and even with um, other payment networks within each market as well. And this is a very high level overview of our strategy, which is to grow our share of commerce and innovation by growing profitable share in our core business, diversifying with new geographies and customers. Much is done through mergers and acquisitions. You can see a lot that we have done in recent years as well, especially in the space of open banking, digital identity. We have had on close to 20 or just more than 20 just in the last eight years. And last but not least, it's also about building new high growth and scalable businesses with digital and services products and solutions. So the framework that you see here actually helps us think about the kinds of activities that we should be engaging in to maximize our growth as well. And I mentioned earlier that you know, our greatest competitor is actually uh, to take over cash, to reduce the amount of cash. But right now, close to 80 to 85% of the world's transactions are still made in cash and checks. Of course, uh, COVID has helped to accelerate that uh, digital transformation to a lot of digital modes of payment, but this still leaves a a huge incredible opportunity for Mastercard to actually gain a bigger slice of this entire pie. All right, so to sum it up, we really execute our strategy through our technology, the power of our brand, and the collective knowledge of our people to grow our core business, diversify geographies and customers, and build new uh, business pipeline as well. All right, and all of this is built on the foundation of safety, technology, brand, and people, which we believe will generate long-term results for all of us. And a little bit about the culture here, you know, uh, when you are choosing your, your first job, right? Um, for me as an undergraduate, culture was a huge thing for me. So it is important to think not only about what you will do, but how you will do it. So the culture of an organization that should definitely align with the values that underpin the way in which you interact with the world. So. For, for MasterCard, we are underpinned by a framework which we call the MasterCard way. Our business strategy, which you heard about uh, earlier, it, about build, uh, grow, diversify, is very clear about where we are going. But our culture is the, the, the guiding light that actually help us uh, make our way there and to help us achieve all these successes. So the MasterCard way is about the things we do that matter most, right? The behaviors that actually unite us uh, together as one today and something that will drive our success in the future. So as a MasterCard employee, it is very important that we all demonstrate these behaviors in the way we work with each other and the way we work with our partners, our clients, our customers, etc. And this is really based on ownership on simplification, thoughtful risk taking, and also creating a sense of urgency to actually meet these requirements. And I think one thing which I'm very proud about is uh, the importance of decency. Underpinning all of this is our culture of decency or decency quotient, what our ex-CEO Ajay Banga used to call it as DQ. We have heard of EQ, we have heard of IQ, but he came out with this decency quotient DQ, which is reflected in our key behaviors of being inclusive, right? Being a force for good and unlocking the potential of people around you as well. All right. So these are just uh, some of the 
awards that uh, we have actually gotten uh, globally as well. It's what drives talent development, innovation, and results to effectively support Mascot's success in the global marketplace. Our diverse team make it possible to achieve the radical innovation uh, which we seek as well. So listed on the screen here are just a handful of many ways that Mascot has been recently recognized. One of that we're also excited about is our Singapore Best Places to Work Award, which we were just recognized for uh, in the recent months. This is a true reflection of the great culture that the Singapore Mascot Office continues to have even though with the challenges of working from home due to the pandemic. And last but not least, I'd just like to end off with uh, a very short one minute video of some of our employees worldwide on what they think about our culture and what they think about working with our company. So sit back, relax and uh, enjoy. The audio is not working, is it? Can someone? Uh... Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not. Okay, working. sure. So, uh, no worries. We'll just try to fix this in the meantime. But uh, maybe while I fix this, I'll just hand on over the time to uh, Tong and Ray Tin as well to just uh, briefly introduce uh, themselves again and also where, where they come from uh, in terms of their team in Mastercard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sing Hao. Uh, maybe uh, we will just move on to the workshop first. Maybe if you're interested to learn more about what we do in MasterCard, uh, we can have it at the end of the session. So uh, Sing Hao, do you mind uh, stopping your screen share first? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, give me one moment while I bring up the screen. All right. Just give me one moment. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, thanks for joining. So yeah, we had a quick introduction just now, and uh, I'm Song Xiep, and uh, Ritin is joining me today to give you um, this workshop. So we'll be going through a workshop on creating Telegram bots and. Um, if you're not already familiar, according to Forbes, uh, more than 45% of small businesses are actually ready to plan for digitalization, but almost 50% attributed um, to the steep learning curve to you know, adoption. So increasingly, merchants are exploring more ways to adopt digital platforms to reach out to customers uh, in this new normal. So in this workshop, workshop you'll learn about how you can create an online workshop on Telegram and you'll be exposed to you know, the bot development through creating a Python server side application and hooking up with some of the Python APIs. Yeah, so a, a brief overview of the agenda of what we're going to do today. Uh, we'll talk about MasterCard later. We'll first show about a, a demo, a preview of what we're going to build, followed by overall architecture, and then the Telegram APIs. And then lastly, we have um, some a code along session where we'll get you through how we're going to build a Telegram bot. Yeah, so first up, we have a demo. Give me a moment by facing some technical difficulties. Yeah, but okay. Meanwhile, if seeing how you have resolved your video, maybe you can start playing it first. Yeah. I still can't get the audio up, unfortunately. That's I think fine. maybe I think because I, I I'm on a web browser. Yeah. 
Uh, all right. Okay, so I hope everyone can see the screen. Is it okay? Yeah. Right, so if you search the hack and roll food store bot on Telegram, you, you'll see this, and then you can start off with like the start. And it's not working. Uh, let me check out something. Yeah, I've tried to rerun the bot. You can try again. Yeah, it's working right. for me now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we will, the first interaction that we have with uh, starting up is to you know start the bot, right? And then it is the fruit store bot. So we like to see you know what kind of items are available in our fruit store bot. So what we can do is we click this and then can one of the commands we're gonna build is to list list all other items available in store. So we click on this and then you'll show a list of the fruits that we have in store right now. So we have three fruits, apple, pear, and orange. So let's say we want to learn more about the items that we have in store. So I want to know more about Apple. So I click on Apple on the inline keyboard. Let's make it a bit bigger. This is too big. And we can see the item is the Apple, obviously. And then there's a description of it. You can edit any amount of text, price of it. And there is also a prompt um, to ask you how many items that you like to add to cart. So let's say we want to add two apples into our cart. And if we make another decision, decision to add more apples, we can add nine apples, and there'll be a prompt saying that, okay, you've added nine, uh, nine apples to the cart. And then let's say I want to buy some more apples. Uh, maybe I want to buy more oranges now. I can click on orange. And you'll come up with the name, the description and price as well. And let's say I want to buy another six more apples. So for here, after we have done shopping, we would like to know what we have already added to cart so far and we want to review it. So we have create, we will create another command called slash cart, which will list all available items in our cart right now. So you can see that we have 11 apples and six oranges. So next, okay, let's say we are really happy with what we have, happy with what we have bought and we'd like to make a payment. So there's a command called slash checkout, which will request for payment. You'll be prompted with, uh, an invoice that says the total amount, which is you know thirty one fifty, and then we get the option to pay for um, the items. So we can click on pay, and over here you'll be prompted with this um, payment slip, and it shows the itemized bill of each um, uh, individual item. So eleven apples is six and fifty, six oranges is six fifty, and that's the total. So we can proceed to pay. So when you proceed to pay, uh, we'll, we'll be prompted with your card details, right? So uh, we can add our card details. Four, four, one, two, three, card code and name, etc. No country, he lives in Singapore, uh, code five, six. And that is done. So once you've added our payment method, you can see uh, the MasterCard card that we've added here. You can proceed with payment by clicking on like uh, the pay button. So yeah, you'll be prompted with um, a successful payment and then you receive a sticker showing that the payment was successful. All right, so this is um, basically what we're gonna build today. Uh, we're building a Python server side application um, and these are some of the features that we'll be exposed to. Um, we'll be keeping it simple. Uh, we'll be building We'll not be creating a database, but we can extend it further if you're interested um, in your hackathon and as well as the other projects. So that is all for the demo session. I will hand my time over to Racine and then he'll proceed to talk about like the overall architecture of how we're going to design it from a technical perspective, along with uh, Telegram APIs that we'll be using. Yeah, thanks, Nancy. Yeah, you can continue to share the slides. Um, yeah, so let us talk about like the architecture. So what we did for architecture wise um, in for this chatbot is really to strip it down to the bare minimum. So what we have is a yeah, what we have is, is a um, backend uh, 
what we have is like the tele Telegram client, right? Who is going to, who's going to be acting like as the front end and for the user to interact with the bot. Then we have the, the kind of like the intermediary or the middle layer where you have the Telegram backend server where you need bot father to initialize your bot and to give your bot, uh, to make your bot searchable as well. Right, so that's the middle, the Telegram um, backend server. And lastly, uh, instead of just uh, running like your code locally on like say Visual Studio Code or PyCharm, we are using this software as a service solution called Replit. So in here is like a, a browser-based uh, integrated development environment, which is a IDE for short, to build our chatbot app. Yeah. So if you need to yeah, deploy it to like the cloud or, or things like that um, is pretty much uh, you have to follow your respective cloud providers um, instructions and also like what Zong Zong mentioned if you want to create uh, in, uh, in deep, uh, integrate your databases you can integrate it with uh, uh, with the relevant packages so what we are building is uh, a, te a telegram chatbot on python so the thing is um, if you want to integrate, for example, your databases, you will use maybe SQL Alchemy or like Mongo, Py Mongo, for example, right? To, to integrate the databases to your Telegram bot. But we are not going to go through that. We are going to go through the bare minimum. And um, what happens is that, yeah, it, it's going to be beginner friendly. And for the more advanced users, uh, you can kind of see how you can kind of extend it and make the whole user journey more, uh, yeah, more, more, more interesting, right? Yep, so moving on to the next part, uh, let's let's have an overview of the Telegram bot API. Yeah, so yeah, uh, there are two ways to kind of receive messages. So one is through long holding where you kind of have a have a client on like a phone, for example, and they keep pinging the servers, right? So in this case, the server will be uh in it will be hosted by Reply. So you just keep asking, uh yeah, uh is there is there any data? Is there any data? If there isn't, then you know, uh yeah, there will not be any response until uh, they, they receive, the server receives a message and then it processes, it handles and processes the message. Yeah, so that is used. And the second one is the alternative solution is a webhook where you kind of uh, have a API endpoint, an application programming interface endpoint. Yeah, where you, uh, where you kind of expose it to the Telegram um, backend and uh, the, the client can, the Telegram client can then um, send messages to that. Uh, endpoint and uh, which will then be handled and uh, a message will be sent back. Yeah. Next. Okay, so yeah, let's take a look at uh, a chatbot. So like usually when you look at a very uh, simple chatbot, usually it's uh, or like a very like, like a very uh, traditional chatbot, they usually just send like um, messages, like text messages. But now with uh, many, um, many uh, more advanced chatbots like um or uh, more advanced messaging platforms like telegram or like facebook messenger for example you are able to send other kinds of messages as well not just a text message we can send like photos and videos uh, or even audio clips then for, for telegram you can even send a contact like a phone contact that you have on your phone uh, and then also if we want like more more uh more enriching data we can send even like locations or even like documents so maybe you want to uh like convert an invoice into a PDF and send it to the uh, customer, you can do it. Yeah. So moving on, uh, I believe it's bot commands. So bot commands are a way for Telegram, for us, for users to interact with te uh, the Telegram chatbot using a commands like with a forward slash, some similar to like how you play like some, some games like maybe Maple Story, you, where you have like the chat uh, function where you can use slash uh, in front and you can, um, use it to have uh, to, to send certain instructions or certain commands to the chatbot. Yeah. So for Telegram, they want to uh, they want us to uh, it's recommended for us to implement these three um, commands. So first of all, is start, and the second one is help, so that uh, uh, if a user is lost, he can he or she can use uh, the help command to get help on how to use the bot. And lastly, is the settings uh command if applicable yeah if let's say you have a, a lot of properties that you want uh the users to like edit or view right so that's probably one that you want to use yeah okay so moving on we look at like some interactive elements of telegram so first of all uh, other than just having a traditional qwerty keyboard you would have 
you can also implement like custom keyboards where like it can be like a Kahoot style where you have ABCD for like MCQ questions, for example, or you can have different options. So like uh, maybe like the uh, maybe like you have like a quiz that has like many different options that can uh, be in implemented as well. Then the other one is the inline keyboards that uh, Song Xian showed, like for example, in the add to cut option where you have like nine different buttons with uh, different quantities, right, for the different groups. Yep, so that can be integrated below messages on uh, the Telegram uh, platform. Yeah, so I guess the next one is uh, the next slide is more like a word of caution. So, uh, yeah, so when if you do, uh, by default, uh, the bots are, have this setting called privacy mode where only they can only view a limited uh, amount of messages, right? So, if you disable it, then what happens that it, what happens is that if let's say you put this chat bot in a group chat, this can this can allow the chatbot right to view all the messages that are sent in the group. Yeah, so that is probably a privacy thing, and uh, it's something that uh, if we if we as developers we want to make sure that um, we are building decent uh, uh, chatbots with decency in mind, we need to make sure that um, we only process messages that we are that are intended for us because it also helps in the in a uh, technical sense where it kind of it kind of like instead of processing every single message that comes into the chat. Uh, that, that that would lead to maybe slow uh, slow, uh, slow like uh, handling times right because you have so many messages that you need to handle every second or every minute yeah so i guess the next part is uh, the code along uh, i'll pass to zhong xian to go through the setup and then uh, we can then code along Okay, so yeah, for the code along, we'll first go through like the lesson plan of what we're going to go through. Uh, we, we'll walk you through how you set up your own Telegram bot, um, initial setup, as well as the IDE that uh, Racing and Shed just now on Reptit.com. This online IDE, minimal setup is required. Um, if you haven't already created an account, uh, it would be a good time to create one and then we'll walk you through the creating of the environment. Then we'll move on to you know the basics of sending, receiving, and sending messages um, before moving on to actually building the fruit store bot that we are uh, that we just showed just now, which include initializing the bot using the start command, um, as well as the other features such as the viewing items that we have in our database, as well as viewing, adding, you know, clearing the cart uh, with all the items that get added to the cart, and finally. Um, the most important step, right, is the for checkout and payment so that you know the merchants can receive their money and the consumers um, can be assured that their payment has been processed successfully. And if there's any other next steps that they have to um, continue with, uh, you can let's <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay, so I think someone's trying to mute their mic. All right, so um, I'll be going through. We will be toggling between screens whereby there's um, instructions here on the slides. Um, we will send out the slides later to everyone as well so you can refer to them. Um, but during our walkthrough, I'll go through one slide and then we'll hand it over to Ray Sin where he will um, walk you through how to do it um, actually. So for our bot setup, briefly, we have we need to interact with the bot father. Uh, he himself is a bot. Uh, either on the mobile application or the desktop application, and we will create a new bot using the new bot command, uh, fill in the required fields, and then generate the HTTP, HTTP API key, which will be um, used uh, as a unique identifier uh, for our application, which is our bot, to request services from the Telegram server. Yep, so over to you, Vincent. Sorry, I was in that. Yeah, I believe you guys can see my screen. So basically, so here in Bob Father, what you have to do is to, you know, what I did is to add a start, if I slash start, and then you have uh, my board, right? So what I can call it, maybe you, you call it like a food store board, but make sure that this uh, name is uh, is unique, right? So maybe you add food store board and your student ID, for example, at the end, right? So let's say my student ID is 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then I'm going to add in, yeah. And so now, yeah, okay, so now, yeah, you can choose a username for the bot. So let's say, um, 
Oh, it has to end in bots. So maybe you can have put store like your user, your student ID and then the bot at the end. So here is the token that we'll be using for later. Yeah. Okay. So, you have to go ahead. Yeah, we'll take a moment um, for those who are following along. Maybe yeah. you have a one minute and then uh, if any questions, you can just uh, raise it in chat or you can just uh, unmute yourself. And, uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, now is the time if you, if you have any questions you want to unmute yourself, please go ahead. Yeah, if not, uh, maybe uh, once you're done, you can maybe uh, react with an emoji so that you know that you're done. Let me see the participants. Yeah. Yes, uh, to answer the question from Penji, uh, if you speak to the bot father, uh, Rizin, do you mind scrolling up a bit? Sorry? Uh, yeah, on scrolling up, yeah, sure. There is a uh, my yeah. bot, edit bot, right? Edit bot, right, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So or you can just start using my bot and then yeah, I can delete the bot. Yeah. 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 And then yeah, you can just just to show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm just so screw up, just not to confuse others. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I think the note as well, right? The key that you see here, the HTTP API key, it's a secret key when it's not supposed yeah. to be shared with everyone but of course now raising the shared it with you um, it is okay <laughs> kind of now. so anyways we'll teach you how you can keep these uh keys a secret well you know you dip, when you're deploying it as well so you wouldn't be sharing your your the secret key to everyone and then everyone will um, abuse the key uh, for nefarious purposes okay so i think it, it should be good enough um maybe i can take over the screen share sure go ahead Right, hope you can see the next part. So the next part, uh, we need the second key, which is the payment provider key. So we've previously already retrieved our HTTPS API key, which is used to talk with our application, right? Uh, but we also need a payments provider key. And the purpose is uh, to allow the payment processes um, to, to be able to talk with the payment processor. And in this case, we are using um, Stripe as our payment processor. And to generate this key, um, similarly, we will talk to the bot father uh, using the mybots command, and then we click on payments, you know, Stripe, and then we connect to the Stripe test account where we can set up a dummy account, as you have seen just now with my dummy card details. And then we have to go through a slew of steps. We don't need to create a Stripe account. You can see this later. And then there will be a generated payment provider key as well. And this key we will have to be we we will have to keep it safely as well. So um over to you, Ritin. Yeah, okay. Um yeah, let's take a look. So here what I've done is to recreate the bot, yeah. And then I use the my bots command, right? And then here I, I selected my bot, and now I would go on to click on payments. And for now you'll be using Stripe. And here you can do shark test. Okay. Yep. And then like what yeah, and then you will start again. Mm -hmm. And the rise. And then yeah, you open the link. Okay. And then uh, yeah, I can skip the form. Right. Yeah, because I don't need to have an account for now because it's in test mode. Right. So make sure that you click, make sure that it's test mode. Yep, and then you can skip the form, which will then uh, allow you to yep, allow you to have the token. Yep. Awesome. I'll pause here for questions. Yeah, if you have any questions, you can type it in the chat or you can unmute yourself.
Oh yeah, I think uh, yeah. yeah, what the question has been answered regarding whether the bot will be switched on forever. So Replit is like a free online IDE. Um, there is a time up period. So after a while, the connection will be reset and you know the environment that you created with the IDE will be erased, mm -hmm. right? So your bot wouldn't be alive, like uh, quote unquote alive forever. Um, but you could do that by deploying the code um, to a provider such as maybe Heroku or something like that. You'll have it uh, constantly on. Be on. All right. Yeah, wait in. Yeah, one question is to redo the flow again, maybe. Okay, you're doing it. Um, you're muted, by the way. Uh, I don't think I'm muted. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, yeah. Okay, okay. So then you click and then it opens up and then uh, you'll you be able to get the token. Yeah, because I've already done it once, so the token will only appear once. So yeah, oh, sorry, it appeared twice. Yeah, so then in this case, it will be updated here. Yeah? yeah, so make sure you have a token that has like the word test inside. Please don't create your own like live payment because you don't want yourself, you don't want your card to be charged, right? Just for trying out how to create a chatbot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope it answers your question. Uh, what? Yeah. Okay. All right. So maybe I'll this. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yep. Okay. Yep. So uh, for those that missed it again, it's just the my bots command. Uh, click on payment, strike, connect to strike test, and then you'll be directed to the strike bot where you can authorize your strike account. And then after that, you'll be redirected again to the strike test website and where you don't have to create a Stripe account. Okay, you don't have to create one, just click on skip this form. And then um, you'll be redirected back again to the bot father where you'll see there's a payment provider key being generated. Right, there should be a word test in here. And there's a string at the, at the bottom, um, if you notice as well as a date and time. Um, this is not part of the key, right? Only the, the first line underneath Stripe test. Okay, so next step, uh, we move on to, you know, actually setting up the IDE, uh, Replit, is of choice that we're going to use today. Um, I hope everyone has created an account. It should be quite simple. If you have a GitHub, GitHub account, you can just create using GitHub or using uh, Google uh, or your Google account. It should be quite fast, so one, one click. And then we will um, create the ID that we'll, that we'll be using, right? So it'll be quite simple. There'll be a, we'll be creating a Python project. And there'll be this button create rep on the top left hand corner, and you'll see something like this. And then uh Rizin will show you how it's done. Yeah, meanwhile, I've been I've sent two slides, one for the bot father one and the other one is for the payment one. Yeah, so there are two pictures in case anyone uh, is still doing it. Yeah, but from now onwards, the replay ones uh, uh, yeah, it's gonna be more of like seeing how it's done rather than referring to the slides. Yeah, so yeah, please follow um, closely. Yeah, so yeah, moving on to Replit. So what you will do is you will create an account and then here you then create a new, uh, you create a new Replit, right? So here you will select Python and yeah, you can just click create. And there you have it, you will have your own ID. Yeah. Yeah, let me repeat again. So now you're in your home screen, right? Click uh, under create, click up uh, the plus button and click Python yeah, in the drop down and click create. Yep, so there you have it.
pausing here for questions again. If you have any questions, please unmute yourself or uh, type it in the chat. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crucial for you guys to get this set up right so that um, when we are creating the chatbot, uh, you can actually test it out on Telegram. All right, so uh, I'll go through the next few slides uh, really quickly, and then we'll hand it over to uh, Rizin to just walk, uh, walk you through um, setup so we won't have to go back and forth anymore. I think the next few setups should be quite simple. So um, after we have cre uh, created you know, the IDE, uh, we have to set up, we have to install a library that we'll be using, which, which is called PyTelegramBot API. So it's a library used that wraps around the Telegram APIs so that we can execute you know, the certain bot functions that we like. Right, so uh, maybe a tip, if anyone is developing on their local environment, you can just use the, the usual pip install uh, high Telegram bot API. Right, then after that, we'll be setting up our environment variables, which is the keys that we have um, generated just now, the HTTP API key, as well as the payment provider key. So um, in Replit, there is a function to save your system environment variables safely, such that it's not exposed uh, to the public. We can fill in the key and the value pairs, and then uh, we'll show you how you can uh, retrieve these keys from environment variables. And then lastly, we will we'll set up uh, a mock database for ourselves. Um, this could be you know, a MySQL database, uh, MongoDB database, uh, you know, Hadoop database. Uh, whichever database that you that you did like. Um, briefly, here's the schema of it. We have two database, fruits and cart. Fruits will store all of our items that we're going to sell. And cart is an individualized cart for each chat. So let's say if you're on an apple, if I talk to the bot, I want to add you know, six apples and six oranges. Um, this database will store um, this information for me. But let's say Waitin goes to the bot and, and requests to buy 12 pairs, right? Um, he will have his own cart and he will have his own uh, items within the cart. So this is the two uh, database that we're creating. All right. So yeah, that's all. Uh, waiting. Yeah, let me share uh, with the how, how to install the bot, the, the package first. Yeah, and then we'll go on to the next part. So here you can see that on the left, you have a site. Okay, I'm sharing now. Um, yeah, so here you can see that there's a sidebar. Uh, you click on packages and you will search for Pi. Yeah, Pi Telegram Bot API. Yep, so it should be this version 4.2.2. When you click it, it should install. So, oh, sorry, click the plus button yep, to install it. So you'll see that on the console, it will be installing. So it's similar to how you do a pip install uh, in your local environment. Yep. So here they have an interface for you to install. Yep, so you should successfully, you should see a success message after you install it. Yeah, then the next part is more of the packages, like the, how to use the package in the environment variables. Um, yeah, uh, on that, we have to look into the environment variables. Okay, so we need to go into the secrets um, tab on the sidebar. And let's go back to Bot Father. Here we have the, here we have the um, Bot token, right? So we will call this API key and we will start here. And then you will have you then you click save, right? And then the next one is the um, payment key. Yep. So if you recall from your programming 
uh, causes that you have uh, you you would uh, initialize your variables to be all com all, all capital letters when it's a when it's a constant, right? Yep. So that's how you do it. Once you're done, um, we'll be sharing with you the the code um, for the database as well as the um, actual main um, skeleton, right? Yeah. yeah. So we will take this time to pause here for questions again. But I yeah. will drop in the chat some paste bin links where we can have some skeleton code as well as the mock database that we'll be using. Yeah. Thanks, Sansi. Hi, yeah, the payment key is from the uh is after you you, you authorize strike, right? You will get a payment key in Botfather. Right. So there, there's gonna be a strike test, and then you have a bunch of uh a bunch of random numbers and alphabets. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Where where does it okay where does it start from? Welcome. All right, so yeah, in chat there's there's two uh I guess you can say code yeah. snippets, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. one will be in the main.py file and we'll create another file which is the database.py paste bin. Yeah, I'll just share screen to show how you're gonna paste it. It's just copy and paste thing. Okay, okay. Yes. let's let's try it. So first of all, I have my uh, piece bin, right? I have this chunk of code. Just gonna select everything until line one four seven, and then paste it in me. Right? So that's for that. Then you will create a new file, right? Add file database, right? And it's gonna be the second link. We're just gonna copy everything. Yep, and uh, paste it in. It's just that. So now you have two files with like a uh, with skeleton code. I'll leave the uh, secrets here again. Just, I mean, please don't copy the secrets. But I mean, just showing you where to where to incorporate the code inside. Yep. So you should have two files, main.py and database.py, and you should have the install package, py telegram bot API, as well as the secrets for both the API key and the payment key. Yep. I'll pause here for five minutes. If you guys need a toilet break or grab, you guys want to grab a drink, right, go ahead. Yeah, let's be back at about um, 3 o'clock. Is that okay? Yeah, that, that sounds good. Um, yeah, so yeah, meanwhile, if you guys have any questions, please let us know. Yeah, so we can have you uh, get this set up. 
Yeah, if you have questions, feel free to let us know. I can try to help around as well because I've been following too. Yeah. Um, All right, so here we got a question. Um, what was the package to install again? So the package to install is um, high telegram bot. Maybe let me sh show you the slides again. Just give me a moment. All right, so the name is this Hi Telegram Bot API. All right, let me drop it in chat. Hi Telegram Bot API. Okay. Um, do you mind showing again? Um, which part do you mean? Um, quick clarify. R. Okay. Meanwhile, um, just checking. Can we use, uh, which text to copy and paste? Okay. Let me answer. Um, the smaller paste question. But, um, what does it check? You know, let's <laughs> Stephen's question first. Just checking. Can we use OS environment, uh, provided by Rapid or must we use OS dot get env hmm um i haven't tried os.environment uh, recently we can uh, chime in on this um, but we can use os.get environment it's yeah both i believe you can use os.environment yeah it should give you a it should return your dictionary and you can get the key from dictionary hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. right so yeah okay so as long as uh, you get to it, as long as you get to print the key on the console it should be all right mm -hmm. Wait, do you mind showing um which text to copy and paste again? Paste yeah, okay, text. so right. let me share screen again. Yep, so here you have two um, you have two these beans, right? One is like Python code and one is like Python, uh, like two Python dictionaries. So the one with the Python code you paste it in main.py. So you just copy and paste. And the second one is you create a new file called database.py and you paste it in. Is the text size okay? Like I tried to increase it already. Yeah, I think it's all right. Okay, thank you. Yep, so to identify, right, the database.py1 has, starts off with a string, right? Describing a database storing the card for each chat and then followed by the schema of it. So that one will identify as this is the uh, text they have to copy into database.py. Okay, so yeah, the other question we have from Smiley Face, uh, what does deploying a Heroku mean? Like, does it enable the bot to be running even when we closed it? Yes, um, that is correct. So we want, because we're developing a server-side application, right, in Python, and we want this um, application to be consistently running and communicating with Telegram via our HTTPS API key that we have, correct? Um, that would mean that the bot is always, quote, unquote, alive because uh, we are able to process the request coming uh, from the bot. Maybe the user talks to the bot and the bot will talk to the uh, to our server and the server will talk to like the 
um, Telegram web servers and stuff like that, right? Uh, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, so basically Heroku is a service, uh, basically. Yeah, it's a company's name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the to answer the question, yes, you will continue running, running even if you close it. Right. So for Replit, uh the application will kill itself after a set time up period. I'm not sure how long is it. Um, but after X amount of time, it will kill all, it will clear the the session. Such, such that your application will stop running. So in this example that we have here, uh, we are not deploying it from Replit. We are just using Replit to as an IDE, as an online IDE, a simulated environment where we develop you know, our chatbot server here. Right, so if we were choose if we were to choose to deploy it, then we would have to um, develop it maybe on a local environment, mm -hmm. which is very much similar to this. Like whatever we build here can be just ported over to the local environment, and then uh, we use a different services to deploy it to like cloud. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, Ritsi, you can expand more about like Haruku or maybe any other services. Sure. So for the Replit one, so you can you deploy it on like Replit. So Replit basically allows you to develop and run it at the same time. It's, it's for example the same as you using TeamViewer to access your other computer, right? And then you code on that other computer, right? To and then you deploy it on that computer, right? So this is more like a Replit is more like a service where you can do that, right? And the other the other the other thing is deploying from Docker. Yes, you can do this, uh, create a folder with main.py and database.py inside and run it in your, uh, in your bash or in your command prompt, right? In your terminal or in your command prompt, depending on your on Windows or Mac. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you run it, then when you, when you stop it on your local machine, then of course the bot will stop working. Yeah, because the Telegram will, you will send like, you, you, there's not, there's not going to be someone that is going to be listening to the, Telegram site to see if there are new messages coming in. Yeah, yeah, like when you yeah. said, so uh, I think Smiley Face said that, uh, yeah, additional step. Yeah, it is. And, and yeah. uh, to reiterate, the reason why we're using Replit is such that we don't have to deal with the complications of setting up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, some, some of you might even need to install Python or like hit in your laptops and all of that. Um, yeah, so using Replit, we kind of uh, remove those complexities and technicalities. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think we should uh, get moving on. So, yeah, let's uh, continue. Let's continue. Um, so we'll, we'll start off like to see uh, your bot in action. Um, let me um, share the screen. Okay, go ahead. So what we're doing next is we're developing um, this, uh, each of these commands. Moving on, so with every new command, we will go through a kind of like a concept slide first before in a way to we'll delve deeper into that, how to develop it and uh, more details about the concept. So the very first uh, command that we're going to do is this parrot command. Uh, it essentially just echoes um, whatever command or text message that you give to it. So we will learn how to receive and send messages using the bot. And there's a concept of message handlers, which actually defines uh, the filter, filters which a message must pass before a message handler is eligible to handle that message. So to the message handler is in the form of a decorator in uh, Python. You don't really need to know what that is. Um, but essentially the filters uh, helps filter certain criteria are met first before the function will be executed. So to register this handler, an example would be something like this where you know, we have a message handler and a command is parrot. So the filter here is that only commands, um, only the command parrot will result uh, in this bot replying to the message, right? So there's a filter and this is the reply to function. And on the right, you will see here um, the expected outcome that we have. So yeah, over to you, Rizzi. Yeah, okay, let's get started. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yep, so here we can see that uh, we have this, I will call this a debug kind of, this is a debug kind of uh, 
function, right? But here we actually incorporate it in the chatbot as a command called parrot. So basically what a parrot does, as we know, right, is that when you, when you say something to the to the parrot and the parrot will just repeat after you, right? So um, what I'm going to do is to kind of uh, implement this. Okay, so here, this is a command that will reply the user with the message that it receives, right? So first of all, let's retrieve the text, right? <laughs> So, so we retrieve the text by saying a message text, right? We give it a variable and then we use the we get the text attribute from the message object. Right. Then the next part is then if we want to, we can print the, the message right into the console. Right. And then you throw in the message text. And lastly, you can use the reply to method in the bot to reply to the message. So, so where do you get the bot object? It's from line 11, where you kind of get the API key and then you initialize the bot with uh, the API key and you store it in the variable called bot. And this is a bot object that you can use to, uh, you can use in the entire script. Okay, so let's try it. There's a big green run button. You can just run it and you press slash start. I'm oh, sorry, press slash parrot, right? You should return, you should reply to your text. And you can see that uh, it's receiving the message on the console as well because we use the print statement. Yeah. Let's try parallel i dot. So you see that the message is being received and it's being replied to. All right, we will pause here about maybe 30 seconds. Um, any questions? Can everyone, I mean, this is pretty much your first bot. Yeah, and you have created your first bot, but please don't leave the, the workshop. <laughs> Right, I think there are no. Yeah, any questions? Now that we have about five lines of code or three lines of code. Somehow my message dot text is underlined and causing an error. Yeah, you can continue typing it. I believe that because you have not been, because you assign it to a variable called message underscore text, but you have not used it yet. So once you type the second line, and you have used the variable, it should not have the the the, the, the zigzag arrows, a zigzag line. Yeah. Does that answer your question? So so to, to fun, right? Um have you tried uh if you typed in everything? Um for example, like print receive message, message text. It still isn't working. Um, for that, are you in the parrot uh, function? Do you have a message is undefined for me? Message undefined for you. Hmm. You copy it from. Yeah. There. Do you want to copy your code and let us see in the paste in the chat so that we can have some idea on how we have coded yeah. it. If you guys want to move forward, I can create a breakout room and jump on that breakout room with the person. Mm -hmm. If that helps. Yeah. Yeah, I think you need to press the run button, the big green run button. Yeah, uh, sure. You can create a breakout room for maybe yeah, we can create it. 
um, after the next part, maybe. Oh, um, presentation problem. Okay. Yeah, there's an auto format button here on the top right if you need it. Yeah. Okay. So I hope yeah it solves the problem. Um, yeah. How about, so for um, those who are not familiar with Python, um, yeah, um, in addition is important in Python. Okay, so um, how about the mess undefined message problem? Um, is that resolved as well? Are you still facing issues? Yeah, it's, it's very important to solve all the bugs that we have now so that you can continue. Oh, you, you delete the past. Okay. Yeah, you can delete the past, yeah. So what you have uh, finally should be what you see on screen right now. Yeah. On which screen. Undefined message. Okay. I uh, really want to take a look at the code that uh, Manula uh, sent. Sorry? Manula sure. sent uh, a snippet of a message and he seems to be having some issues. I think he's, I think he, I, I didn't receive it. Maybe uh, okay. he or she sent to you. Okay. Yeah. Paste it again. Check. My, okay. my bot doesn't be screen the receive message or reply. I think this something the one that you sent. I think the print, the print, the the print um should be in a, in a new line, right? So you you can't have print here. You have to have a new line. Uh. Yeah, reply underscore two. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, why don't you just copy and paste? Yeah. Uh, if it works, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but only for this one. <laughs> no module name tally bot types error was found. Uh, do you copy and paste from paste bin the skeleton code? So you should have uh more than a hundred lines of code before we even start coding. Okay, maybe we see. Go to the top and see whether the imports are correct. Uh, uh okay. sorry, which one? Let's go to the top of the main dot py. Oh, the, yeah. So you make sure you have all the imports. Yeah, the green ones are okay. It's just saying that's unused, but uh, we'll be using it later. Okay, can you send your code? How do I pronounce her name? Uh, Marie. Uh, Marie, can you send your code? Yep. Um, yeah. We will give you a couple of seconds to send your code. Um, if not, we will continue and Chaitanya can go on to have a breakout room later. Yeah, yeah, I've actually opened the breakout room already. So okay. if you guys can move forward if you want to, I'll join the breakout room and help out the Yeah, person. there's a help. There's a help room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's move on. Uh don't see it. Let's go on. Okay, sure. All right. So uh, hopefully most of you are able to create the parrot command and hopefully it works already. Next time we will have, you know, we will build our first function, which is to list out all, you know, the items or fruits that we, are, that we have in a database um, as inline buttons. Um, as you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, this is what you will see, um, apple, pear, and orange. All, all of these are interactive buttons. So um, the concept here is really to, to learn how to send a message with this interactive keyboard, which is the inline keyboard, using the inline keyboard markup uh, object. And then we'll, we'll show you how you can send a message together with this um, keyboard. And additionally, we'll learn another concept about uh, how we associate uh, data with the callback button. And these uh, are call, uh, callback data um, will be in each of these uh, inline keyboard buttons. 
So we encoded in each of these inline Kiva buttons, and then your bot will receive this relevant uh, query of the callback data when the button is selected. So for example, when you click Apple, uh, for example, the button Apple will have a callback data encoded inside in it. And when you click on this Apple button, the data uh, will be sent uh, from the bot uh, to your Python application, right? So when your Python application receives, will be what it receives will receive something like this, um, items, detail, and then a fruit name. And this is a user defined. This is what we're, we're going to define it as. Um, Rachel will go deeper into it and show you how it's done. Yeah. So let's start with initializing the bot with the start command. Then we'll go on to view items. Yeah. So let's see how we can do the start command, right? So here we have the command start right in line 39. So yeah, here you have a start um, command, right? A start uh, a start function. So what you're gonna do is to uh, implement the start function by creating an empty card for the user. Give me a second. Yep. So here let's try and get the chat ID. Right. So first of all, we will use we will create a new variable called chat ID and we will pass in the mm, the chat ID. So it's the chat um, object in message. Okay, and then the ID uh, attribute. So that's how you get the chat ID. And then the next part is to check if the message, right? The type of the message. Is this a private chat between you and the chatbot? Or is it between a group and the chatbot, right? So if it's a private chat, so you get the person's first name. So using a, in the chat object, you have the first name. And then if not, then it's the title of the chat, right? The group chat or something. And the next thing is to have a message variable that takes in sorry, message text because the message is being used by the object already. Uh, and we don't want to overwrite it. So to you to hide chat is the F string, and then um, we will then initialize the card. So the card is from the database um, database um, file that we have copied paste just now. So you have the card available here, and um, now you pass in the chat ID, which will then be an empty dictionary and you use what that reply to so this is what happens is that this initialized portion is more of like what you're doing on the back end right you're not going to show the user that you have created an empty card right you're just going to say hi to the user but be behind the scenes you can do your own logic right and your command flow So that's how to start. Um, how the start function looks like. Okay, then I will run it. Okay, let's say if I don't run it, um, the start shouldn't work. Right? There's no there's no response until I run it. Then yeah, there should be a response after you click, after you type slash start. And so from here, yeah, I'm just gonna pause here. Yeah, maybe to add on also, right? So we are using a mock database right now using simple, you know, Python dictionaries. Um, but this could be the function where you initialize your, your uh, connection with the database and then uh, create maybe uh, a role with for each of the users that talks to your bot here. So we have just simplified it in terms into one line as a uh, initialized card uh, as a dictionary, but uh, of course you can do add in more. You can do a lot of things. Yeah. 
you can initialize default settings, yeah, do, do the kind of logic that you need to have. So like any one-time setup that you need whenever a user interacts with your bot, you can uh, set it up here. So let's say if I clear the history of the chat, you should be, there should be a start button. Yeah, when you start the chat bot. Yeah, sometimes it shows, sometimes it doesn't. Not oh. very sure how the logic looks like in telegrams and yeah. Okay, um, yeah, I'm gonna pause here and if you have any questions, please uh, type in the chat or unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, uh, question to smiley face. Yeah, question, uh, answering smiley face question. Uh, what happens is that we have a database, right? We, we shouldn't have like a one person having one database, but here we have like a card, right? So what happens is that you will have your, your chat ID as the key in the card object and then a card dictionary and then, yeah, so now we are using Python dictionaries as like a database. But uh, yeah, it's, yeah, best practice is to have your own database, but we are not going to go into details of like how to implement the database collection and setting up the database and yeah. Mm -hmm. and maybe to answer uh, the question, but is it like each person has one database? Uh, no, we will have one general database, right? And then within the database, there may be multiple tables, right? So in our case, maybe we have a food store database and then we have two tables, one- Items and users, for example. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, items and card, for example. Yeah, correct. Items and card or foods and card. Yeah. And then you can add more, right? Maybe let's say you don't only sell fruits, you also sell, I don't know, masks or you sell toys, you get multiple tables in there. Mm. Okay, so there's no questions. Let's go on, let's go on to the next part. Um, yeah, here, so we have the items command, right? So it's roughly line 61. Yeah, so here we would then implement um, the command that lists the items for sale, right? So here we have some, uh, uh, some uh, like kind of uh, flow through logic, right? Where you see if the, if the chat ID is not in the card, meaning, meaning that it's not, in the, it's not in the dictionary. What you would do is then you would run this request start to get them to uh, get get them to start the app, uh, get them to start the bot first. So, what happens is that if I were to not have not run anything, uh, as in not initialize anything, if I were to pause cut, then you will say please start the bot. So then you can click start and it will start. So for here, from here we would let's look on the um, items. Uh, Function. Okay, same thing. We will take the chat ID and okay, we have it already. So now it's the chat text. Right here, we would have um, select the item you would like to view in detail. So this is the message that is going to pass in. Right, and then we will create a list of buttons. So for here, we will then, uh, we will then uh, iterate through the entire fruits database. So we know that the database, we have the fruit name as the key of the dictionary. So here you can see that here we have apple, pear, and orange, right? So here we would say, we would know that these are the key, right? So, uh, we would do uh, button row, right? Because we would have, we want one button to be in each row. Okay. And then we would, finish, we would create a button object using the inline keyboard function, uh, inline keyboard button uh, object type. And we will pass in two variables, group name, as well as the callback data. The comment data will be a string that we will use to handle later. So what happens is that, uh, okay, maybe I'll finish this first. And then you add in the fruit name. Yeah, so this is my comment data. So it will be view details apple, view details orange, for example. Right. So what you do is then you have a yeah, 
you append the button and lastly you then append the row into the buttons. Yes. And then you do the bot dot send message. You pass in the chat ID. As well as the text, which is the select item you would like to view in detail, right? Then the last one is the buttons itself, right? So it's it's a variable called it's an argument, right? They don't pass in the parameter reply markup. So you're taking the inline keyboard, you will create inline keyboard um markup object that takes in the two-dimensional um list of buttons. Yeah, in Python it's the list, right? Yeah. So what an S. So let's try running this. First of all, you must start the board and you can click on items. Yeah, okay, something is wrong. Um inline keyboard button. Mm, it's not defined. Okay, inline keyboard button. Uh, I changed it for you. You run it. Yeah, type something wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah I forgot the bot, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's key inline keyboard button instead of inline key button. So every time you start the bot, remember to start first, then you get items. So you should get items, right? Uh sorry, yeah. We apply to smiley face, yeah. Um, my our bot has the the slash button, right? If you want to implement it, is in line fourteen. Set my commands. So what you will do is you will create a list of um bot commands. So here you will take in uh, the command name, which is start, and then the description that right? starts the bot. Then you will be able to get the um you'll be able to get the uh, start in the command. And then if you want the other one to be items, right, in this case, then you would say view, view items. Also, oh, what is view, what is append? Also, append is to add, uh, add elements into the list. So a list is, uh, is a series or like a, uh, yeah, it's a data structure, right? So you can have multiple, Objects are multiple elements in the list. So it can be a list of numbers where you have one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, four, for example. So if you want to add five into the list, you would use li the list of list variable, then you use the append method and you pass in five. Right. Okay, I'll slow down. Right. So uh Stephen. Right now, you're seeing what Ritzy is doing, right? They have the, the commands to appear. Uh, Ritzy, can you go back to the set commands part? Yeah. yeah so, so, okay, let, maybe I'll copy the set my commands part into the chat, and then I will uh, screen share the actual um, uh, items function. Yep. So, for Steven, right, the, the code snippet that Ritzy just shared, uh, you insert this at the top. Uh, right after when you retrieve the API uh, information. Yes. Yeah, so this will tell the bot that, okay, we have these two commands, start and as well as uh, items. And as we go along, we add new um, commands. We will add it into this uh, code here for set my, uh, into this function here. Hope that helps. Yeah. It's really useful when like for example you're just lazy to type the commands, right? You can just go in and just tap right on your phone or you click on your on your on your computer, right? Yeah. yeah. Um so Mohammed Salah, I hope I didn't butcher your name. Um is there any particular part that you are having issues with that we need to show again? Uh, 
Uh, no need to reopen sadly. You just need to stop the chat. Oh, sorry, stop the uh, reopen. Yeah, if the button, the slash button did not appear, you probably want to uh, clear all the chat history, close Telegram, reopen Telegram, and re um, restart the conversation with the bot. Yeah, so you basically delete the entire chat. Yeah, basically, you can show that if you move out. Yeah, of you want to re yeah. Let me copy the bot name first. Okay, so let's say here, right? I would delete the entire chat. And then I'll turn, I'm going to search for my chat, right? Hmm. Then you see the start button is here. Uh, yeah, scroll up to line 90. Sure, go ahead. Line 90. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, some more. So I think we can just skip the line. It's show from line 74 onwards, right? Because the top part is in yeah. there. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, so now the start button is here and I can use the uh, slash, the, the commands button, right? So you can yeah, basically use that. Yeah. Oh, I answer your question. Okay. Um, yeah, it could be a different version or it could be, yeah. It really depends. I think mine is the new, I think what mine is one of the newest versions where you can react to messages. Okay, that's that's a separate topic altogether. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so in the chat, uh I'm oh, sorry, in the chat I actually you add the line, the set my commands in line 14, right? R roughly line 14, right? If you add this in, you will get the slash right so what you would do is you would delete the entire chat right and then you would search for good store right good store board and then you then yeah then you would have to yes yeah, find find your bot again and then you have to start and get the items yeah so that answers Yeah, um, go to the items part, sure. So this is just error handling, right? The slide 70 to 73, 75 onwards is the actual logic. So here, yeah, maybe for the more advanced um, coders or developers, here we have a we have a we have a two D um two D array of buttons right so now each array has a each array will have one button so one button being in one row right so you can think of this as a three by one a three by one um structure yeah you can call it a matrix <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, maybe I'll give you all one minute, and I'll go on to do the view. Uh, code the view items. Um, error name card ID is not defined. Um, make sure that you're in the right function called items and we should handle uh, chat, chat ID not defined. So what happens is that uh, if chat ID is not defined, what you should see is... I mean, I think it's card ID, not chat ID. Oh, chat. oh sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Card ID, is it? Um, yes, uh, hi there. Yeah, it should, be, yeah it, should, it should be, you haven't start the... Yeah. yeah. You need to run the... Whenever you the slash type, start, yeah, I have to have the right slash start first. Then you do your slash items. Yeah. So let me just clear the screen. I, I rerun the bot, right? If I were to use slash items, I will get an error message, right? Not really an error message, right? Because uh, we want to have a, a smooth flow, right? So we have this um, uh, kind of information where you have to 
uh, press start first, then you can go on to these items. Yeah. So if you have a card ID is not defined, it's probably um, yeah, you haven't run slash start. Yeah, so the card is not initialized, so you can't get the actually that there is also no card ID, right? There's no card ID here. Oh, maybe yeah, then it could be a typo as well. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be Yeah, chat it ID. could be a typo. Yeah. Yep, so if you guys want to the bot token is not defined, um go into your environment uh, secrets the environment variables, make sure you have the API key saved. Make sure you save it. You don't copy and paste and you just let it toggle away and uh, navigate away where you forgot to save. The code for initializing the card should be in line. Um, yeah, should be in start. So here is the code for initializing the card. Yeah, good question, dot, dot. Um, why do we want to do that? Because sometimes you might have, you might want to have multiple buttons in a certain room, right? So it's better to have, uh, so that's how they, the developers of Telegram did it, is to create a matrix of buttons, a, a two-dimensional array of buttons. Yeah. So you yeah. Will need to have a list of one button, and then you append it into the entire button list, the buttons list. Yeah, and then you will see this later in the adding like yeah, adding to quantity where, where we have like one to nine, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different like uh buttons mm. in like a three by three matrix. And yeah. Okay, okay, let us continue with the view items. Yeah, then after the view items, we can have a short break where we can kind of help everyone debug and if you need to uh Type any code. Yeah, I'm gonna go into what does comment data do. Okay. So here what happens is that you see when you click on Apple, right? Nothing's gonna happen. It's waiting for you to handle view details with Apple, right? But you have not handled the callback here, right? So now we are gonna handle view detail app, view details Apple. Okay. So here we are gonna do the uh, handle callback function. So first of all, we will take in the chat ID. So now it's not a message object, it's a call object. Write a callback object. So basically what happens is that here in the user sees the button Apple, but in the back end when you click Apple, what's, uh, what's the data that's being sent back is view details Apple. So now you have more details of what's gonna happen. So that's where the where the callback data is being saved uh, or being sent, right? So here you will say call the callback object. You will use the message, uh, get the message object, and then the chat object, and then the ID attribute, right? Then you get the data of the uh, callback object, right? Then here we have. Uh, we kind of split it into two like different parts, right? So we have the intention of the data, right? So the in so the callback is something like is something like view detail apple, right? Or in this case, it's a capital A. Right? So what we do is we want to do a string split. So we get the first element, and then the rest of the elements will then be the actual data. So what happens is that now intent is gonna be uh intent is gonna be uh view, right? So intent is gonna be view, right? And then data is gonna be it's gonna be detail apple. So what you are doing is that you can send a lot of mess, a lot of a lot of data in your callback data, and then you slowly process it. Uh, uh, word by word, for example. Yeah. So here you have an intent and the data. So the intent will be view and the data will be detail apple. Right? So this is where you do your uh, string slicing. Right? Okay, I, I think I missed out my parentheses or brackets. Yeah. 
So here you will say if the intent is equals to view, then we will do the view item details. Yeah, okay, and then you pass in the chat ID and the data. Okay, so this is the first part. Yeah, I'm gonna go a bit fast now. Uh, then we will have a short break uh, after this part. Yeah. So here you will say, now you have the item details, right? So here uh, you will take in the sub intent, which is um, the detail, the word detail, right? And so this is another function called view item details. This is a helper function. And then you would pass in the fruit name, right? So now it will just be data.split. So data now is the detail apple, right? So now you will split it and it will become, the detail will be passed to, will be assigned to sub intent and apple will be assigned to the fruit name variable. Okay. Then the next part is to kind of get the description, price, and the next part is to get the, yeah, I'm just gonna use the description, price, and image URL. And then I will go and I'm gonna send everyone this part. I mean, there's no need to copy paste. I don't need to type it from scratch. Yep. And then the next part is the caption, which I am gonna copy paste as well in the chat. And then we will do buttons equals to an empty list. Same, then we will do a count. We will do a counter. And then we, will, we are gonna do a three by three, um, three by three, um, button this so here you have two like uh, we use the underscore because we are not using the variable right so we just want it to run three times right the code to be run three times so here you have two for loops and then you pass in the row so each for uh, it, then the inner for loop will, will then be uh, Processing the rows, right? So then you do a count plus equals to one. So you always in increment the count. And then the next part is to kind of pass in the uh, button, right? So now you pass in the button. Um, it should be on. Uh, and here you will say, uh, you will take in the the integer, uh, sorry, the string, right? You're converting to string. Yeah, and then you take in the count. Here is the quantity. Yeah, quantity is the string count. The name is the. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, then let me this in here. You convert the count into a string, right? So then you can pass in. That's it. Okay. So that's how you make your code easier to read. Yeah. And then you do the row append, the buttons append. This part. Let me just copy this to the chat. Then the last part is to release. Instead of sending a message, now we are sending a photo. So now we take in the chat ID, image URL. Which is the caption? Oh, there is there's this this uh, these few lines here, and then we have the reply markup. Yep, this one is better for you guys to try typing in. Yep. 
So now you can see that when I run Apple, right, it doesn't, when I click on Apple, nothing happens. So what I will do is to restart the chatbot. And yeah, and then I will have to start again and run items. And then when I click Apple, something should happen. Okay, this object has no attributes split in line 117. Data, yeah, I think it's just data. <laughs> there is already a list. Yeah. So let me run. So as long as I rerun, I will have to start first. And then pass in the items. Okay, should we go click? Yeah, and this should happen. Yeah, I'm gonna pause here for any questions uh, for you, for any of you who still needs to catch up. I'm going to also make the code slightly smaller so I can fit in more, uh, more code in this, on the screen. Yeah, uh, we can continue in about 10 minutes, 3.55. Meanwhile, those who have finished can, yeah, for those who have finished, can, you can take a break or you can try to understand what the code is trying to do. Yeah, meanwhile, if you have any questions, unmute yourself or um, send in the chat. Chat text is not defined. I think you meant chat ID. under your items. Mm -hmm. I don't remember having a chat text um, variable. Chat text. You mean caption? Before captions, uh, comment data, there's no chat text, this one. You let me know which line, yeah, it's easier. You can see my screen, you can let me know which line is it. Line 60. Line 60 is this one. Line 60 is an empty line. This one, message text. Mm. Reach line 70, chat ID, not chat text. It is chat underscore ID, not chat underscore text. Uh, line 75, this one. Oh, okay. This one is not listing the, this one is listing all the available items is this one. Yeah, so here is, this is the send message. Okay. So this is, this is, this is separate from this part. Yeah, why you got an error? Do you want to send your code so we can see the entire part, right? So from uh, bot dot message, message handler commands equals items all the way to bot dot send message send us this portion, this entire portion. It will be easier for us to help you debug. Yeah. Uh, let me just repeat myself, um, break to 5 p.m. Yeah, uh, Chaitanya, I think after this at 3.55, we can really have the breakout rooms. Whoever who are still having problems, um, they will, they will be, they, they should join the breakout room. Yeah. Anything after, yeah, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna get more advanced, right? Yeah. View item details. Yeah, mainly is, yeah, mainly most of the code has been copy pasted. Um, yeah, maybe I copy paste this part. 
yeah, the actual sending of the message, I think it's good that you put it out yourself. Yep, so, oops, let me send it the right one. So callback query handler function, this one. Yep, so. Em, are you okay with this part? So what happens is that we have this view item detail so that we can remove all the, you know, all the complexities of rendering the item details message into another function. So that's easier for you to read the handle callback function. Yeah. Cause usually for callbacks, um, you would realize that after a while you have a lot of different intents and all different callback data that you're trying to handle. It's going to be very long. Yeah. So it's better for us to kind of split it up into two different functions. Uh, my chat ID role controls an initial error, but my code is the same as yours. You you might want to check if the items definition you do you like make sure that um, there's no like wrong indentation before in any code beforehand, which might affect the the, the actual function here. Yeah, because Python is very much um, indent sensitive. If you were to inline keyboard object is not iterable. That is inline. Yeah, it shouldn't be an iterable. It should be an inline keyboard markup for the last part. You got infinite polling exception. Do you want to show us what's the mess? What's the error? and uh, the rest, if you can help to move up. Okay. Uh, be right back. Okay. So uh, infinite polling exception. Yeah, I need to see what is the exception that you're facing. Uh, have you tried like maybe stopping the program and then rerunning again? Does it? Help. Yeah, I think it'll be easier for him to share the screen, so maybe he can go to the breakout room. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Um, yeah, feel free to join the breakout room. I'll help you out there. Yeah, yeah maybe we can uh Iru, Iru, great. Um yeah, I can join the breakout room as well. See the callback code again. Okay, I'll share my screen instead. Uh, you're referring to this one, right?
Here is it. Um, yeah, okay, 355. Um, yeah, just an announcement. If anyone is having uh, issues with your code that, uh, yeah, that you can, uh, that you're still having problems, please go ahead to the uh, breakout room where you can uh, get more help. Okay, uh, don't say you want to continue with, hmm. with the slides. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's the, the card functions, right? The view card, uh, add to card, view card, and clear card. All right. So yeah, the next uh, feature that we're going to be building is the view card. So after we have added, you know, initialize the card, uh, for each of the chat, as well as we edit new um, items in our cart, we want to let the users have the ability to see you know, what items are in their cart right now. And so we'll create this uh, slash cart command. So in this command, right, we'll, you'll learn about uh, basic uh, styling and formatting of text uh, using the Markdown uh, v2 formatting. So uh, the bot API can supports this basic formatting if uh, anyone in the audience is familiar with a markdown, uh, it supports that. So some of the options include uh, bolded text, uh, italics, underline, strike through, or even um, recently, I think like maybe a few days ago, Telegram uh, unveiled this new uh, function, which, which is the spoiler formatting. Uh, you could do that as well. So in the example that we're going to show here is we're going to show the underlying um, styling for the uh, text that we're going to send to the user. So, which is now uh, back to yeah. you. Let's continue with view uh, add to cart first. Then we will do view cart. Yeah. Okay, so let me share screen. Yeah, so for add to cart, um, basically what you will do is you need to go back to the, because now here we ended off with add, like for example, add one apple or add two oranges, right? Or even add nine uh, pairs, for example, right? So here, this is the callback data that we are passing in. So what we need to do is to go back to the handle callback, right? And here, yeah, uh, yeah we would want to do a do an intent, right? To check if the intent equals to add, right? So if it equals to add, then you'll do the add card. Yeah, and then you pass in the chat ID and the data. Yeah. So here, if we want to, if you want to like make it more elegant, right, um, you can add in the uh, uh, print statement to say that if any other intent, right, then you will say that, oh, this is not, this callback is not implemented, right? Yeah. If you want to, if you want a more elegant, um, if not, then yeah, in case like this, in case there's a fallback, right? So here, if it's add, then you do the add to cart. So here we have the add to cart function. Um, we're gonna take in the data, right? So what, what, what do we have in the data? We have quantity and item name, right? Uh, sorry, the uh, food name, right? So here we will take in the quantity and the food name, and then we assign data to it. So here you will take in the you you let us access the cut of the chat right or the user or the or the group right in this case and then you access the card we know that the the card would definitely be available for this chat because we have this error handling beforehand right so here we will say then you you want to add to the add the quantity to the fruit name right but then there's gonna be a chance where uh, the fruit name is not in the card, right? You're adding a new item, right? That could happen. So what we use is we can use the dot get function. And if the fruit name is not found, you will return zero, right? So here we can then we can then copy the this code, right? And paste it and change this to plus equals. So then you assign it back to the fruit name uh, key. In your card. 
Yeah. And the last part is to do the port dot send message. You should pass in the chat ID and the uh, text right that you want to pass in. So that is that part. Okay, if that's done, um, yeah, let me try and continue with view part, hoping that the code will still be on the screen. Yeah. Okay, so here we will do view part where we will say, um, we will initialize the text right for the card. So now we are going to use markdown. So it's going to be underscore for the underline, right? And then like two underscores for the underline. So two underscores before and two underscores after. So then if you check if the if the cut is not if the cut is empty, right? Then you would say then you would change cut text, right? So cut is empty. If not, then You do you will look through the, the fruits and the quantities. I'm going to paste these two lines in the chat. Yep. And then the last part is to send a message. and pass mode, so you need to let, let it know that um, this is not down. Yeah, and it should work. I'm trying to squeeze as much as I can in screen. Yeah, so what I will do is to run it. And we're going to test it, right? Oh, yeah. Because it's a text, right? So we need to uh, convert it to this. Because here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are text, right? Are strings. So you need to convert it to an integer. Yeah. So I need to stop running, right? And then restart. And then it's good to kind of play the history. And then restart. So then edit by that will appear, right? And then you do the stash card and you should see that the card has five apples. So card with the underline and then five times apple. Yeah. I'll pause here for questions. Yeah, so also, right, if you remember just now of how we're gonna, how we, if we want to add a slash command in the list of commands available, we have to set it, we have to add the new command in the set command function at the top of the script.
Yeah, feel free to ask questions if you have. Yeah, okay, add to cart. This part. Yeah, let me see if I can get everything up. Okay, I can almost. Okay, I'll give you guys one more minute, then we will go on to the last part of it. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip the clear cut um, function. I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you just need to find if find the, the card right using the chat ID and you use the uh, dictionary.clear uh, method to clear the card. Okay, so the clear, clear card, I'm going to skip. Yeah, Rishin, do you mind scrolling a bit up for the add to cut? I think yeah. add to cut is okay. I highlighted add to cut. Yeah, then yeah, everything else is view part. Yeah, yeah. Timo would like to see the top part of the code for add to the cut. whole thing. Okay. The top part, the top part. Is it? Okay. Um, uh, Lukaku. Um, you're probably gonna send it after the, um, yeah, the session. Um, typically we send a post workshop email to all the people who are SVP. Yeah, with the slides and the code. Yes. Yeah. So just send me a link and I can send it to all the participants later. Yeah. Okay. Item function, which item function? View items, view item details. Okay, that is pretty early, right? This one. Yep, okay, maybe uh, Zongxian, uh, in a minute's time, at 4.10, we can start with, we can continue with the last part of the uh, workshop on the checkout. Not sure. mm -hmm. View card method code. View card. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna send the card text all the way to this part of code. Yeah, the last part um, is good to try it out. View items. Let me send view card first. And view item details. <laughs> yep, okay, so say let's continue. All right, sounds good. Screen. All right, so uh, hopefully everyone is able to follow along. Um, if not, there's always opportunity to review this recording session and then we'll also send out the slides along with like a demo code that we used to develop uh, this hacker robot. 
Right, so the final part, right, after you um, added your items to the cart and then you confirm that, okay, this is the stuff that you want to buy, you proceed to checking out. So this checkout, uh, last part for checking out, we will create an invoice using the Telegram's payment API. Um, payment API. So it's, I think it's the version to the newer one. And then uh, we'll send a message to notify of the receipt of the, of the payment. So for this uh, APIs. I think there are three main uh, concepts that we have to uh, understand, which is the pre-checkout query handler, which handles uh, any pre-checkout payment processing, such as maybe checking the card details, um, as well as and then the second part is uh, invoice handler. This is the invoice creation um, that will be sent to the uh, to the user. So this is what you see on the right hand side here, right? This is the invoice that you'll be, be sending to the user. And then lastly, we have the payment success handler. So when the user clicks in to pay, they add in its payment details, right? And then uh, submits for payment. And if you know the payment service provider in our case, right, says that, okay, the payment um, has been processed successfully, and then um, we will reply with a payment receipt. So as you can see here, and in our message handler, remember, if you recall previously that this part is a filter, right? So the content type, we are filtering for the case whereby there is a successful payment. And then we will send like payment success, success and stuff like that. So if you'd like to learn more about additional payment APIs, such as maybe shipping, adding of shipping details, um, adding of like maybe tips, for example, I can explore the link uh, at the bottom of the slide. So yeah, uh, Rachel, maybe you can go over briefly about how we can go about the checkout card. Yeah, okay, let's go on to the checkout command where uh, you can kind of type slash checkout and uh, it, should, it, should, uh, it should send you like a, a order, order detail kind of message, right? Uh, yeah, and that is called the invoice. <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's try to get this out. Um, yeah, sorry, there's some things on the background. So I'm just going to code a bit while muted. Wait, do you want to share your screen first? Your screen is not shared. Oh, so yeah, I forgot to share. Yeah, okay, just share screen. You guys can see it now. So here is the checkout card. Um, yeah, so you have the commerce checkout, right? Yeah, so that's how you would handle like if there's an uh, empty card, right? You just send a message that there's nothing in your card. Yeah. Then the next part is more of like um trying to render all the prices of each fruit that you are uh, going to uh that they are in the order right, in the card. Yeah. So this is the first part. Um I'm going to send it, send the code. Yeah, Chaitan, yeah, I actually skip the clear card, uh, clear card, yeah, because it's just a dictionary clear. Yeah. So this is the part where you kind of add in the prices. And then the next part is to look into the details of like the invoice, right? So you will have to provide some details of the order itself. Yep. And then the last part is to do the bot dot send invoice. This one here is best for you to, you know, type it out yourself. Yep. So chat ID. Yep. 
<laughs> it's just copying the uh, variables on top. Uh, inverse payload. Then we have the provider token, which is the, the payment key that uh, is being they retrieved from your uh, secrets, right? And then currency prices, which is the, which are the the itemized prices, right? And then uh, we have this parameter to kind of start the the invoice. I'm just gonna pause here. Yeah, there's a lot of things that, that have to go on in order to generate a proper invoice with the proper inf uh, with all the essential information. All right, so maybe I can delve a little deeper, like what are the attributes for the sent invoice, right? As you can see, there's like title, I think self-explanatory as well as like description. Uh, invoice payload is something that um, is unique and you can use it to maybe keep track of the invoices uh, that you sent out, right? So this could be anything, yeah. but you, whenever an invoice is created uh, and the payment is made, this invoice will, this the text in the invoice payload can be stored maybe in a database, for example, uh, for you to make analysis of you know, how many invoices you have made and, and stuff like that, to, to keep track of all the purchases and stuff. So currency right now, we are supporting only uh, Singapore dollars. Of course, um, you could replace maybe, for example, USD, uh, Canadian dollars, uh, Thai baht, so on and so forth, and you can expand it even further. And as well, an op op option would be to, you know, have a currency converter to convert the price based on the currency uh, of choice by the user. And lastly, the start parameter is just uh, a parameter to be used uh, by this set invoice such that we can generate a receipt for it. So it, it can be anything uh, that, that you want. Yeah, I think maybe it's... Yeah, uh, yeah then let's move on. Yeah. Yeah, let's move on to the second last function, which is the pre-checkout function. Yeah, so this is the one where you can you kind of uh, handle the checkout. So by the for now we are doing just a test, right? So we just put OK equals to true and all the uh, like the default parameter, like the uh, like the default kind of like the default uh, arguments to the error message, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and then the error message is something that you can use. When so you to want test to your application. Right, we will have uh, dummy payment details, which is the card number that you see there, all fives, and then the last four digits is four. Uh, you can just put one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. And any other random values, yeah. The only important part is the card number, and then that's all mm. when you're testing. Yep, so this is how it looks like, right? Maybe I can. Fix me. Add the details. Save it and upload. So 
Shall we move on to the last? Yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, yeah, let me just, yeah, I finished sending the details, right? So you can pay. Oh, I forgot to rerun the bot to handle this. So I guess it's still waiting for like a response. Uh, yeah, you should test the payment, the pay button after you finish doing this. Yeah, okay, I have to clear the chat. Okay, why don't we go on to the last part first before we test again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a question from uh, Yang Ken, right? Um, yeah, uh, how to do a back button. So basically, uh, it's, the, it's similar to how you do like the view items where you have apple, oranges, and pears, right? Instead, you can do like a back button and then uh, maybe you can, yeah, uh, you can go back to the previous message or something like that. Yeah, so the, the template is roughly the same. Yeah, I hope I answered your question. Yeah. Okay, so basically, instead of the button being Apple, right, it can be the button having the word back, right, for example. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the last part is payment success, right? Yeah, so here. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna. Copy and paste the variables. So this is the part on human success. Why is that copy? Okay, then uh, we do a, lastly we do a, a sending a message. And then, yeah, if you want a sticker, right? And then here we will uh, get the card, right? So that is for the payment success. Yeah, I'm just gonna copy the whole function and send it to you guys. Yep, so the, for the payment part, there are three important portions. So first of all is the um, checkout. You need to find a way to initiate the payment. Then once you initiate the payment, you need to handle the payment. Once you handle the payment, you will need to, uh, you will need to uh, acknowledge the payment, right? So I'll, uh, yeah, I'll pause here and I'll test the bot. It works. <laughs> yeah, to Aaron, right? So, you know, we, we have learned how to like send messages, uh, send photos, you know, send photos with like the inline interactive keyboards. You also could send these stickers, right? So it's the same as the API that we have for send message. You just send stickers and we will use the chat ID so that the bot knows which chat to send to as well as the data. So the data in this case is, if you see, it's just a long like garbled st string of like alphanumerics. Um, this identifies which sticker, sticker to send. So if you want to like add your own stickers, uh, one way to find out what this string, uh, what the string of like uh, alphanumerics are for the sticker that you want, you can use uh, a helper bot. There is a bot on Telegram you can search at things called sticker, sticker bot or something like that. And then when you send a sticker to that bot, that bot will reply you with uh, the string that you need. Yeah. 
that represents um, the sticker that you that you just sent. So that's how I got this uh, Patrick sticker. Yeah, maybe we give like two more minutes. Um, yeah, and we can wrap up. Okay. Uh, Richard, I think there's a there is a question. Yeah, there's a question on inline key ball button, right? Yes. Um, inline key ball button. I'm not very sure which part is that. There's quite a bit of inline key ball button. There's two parts. One is the oh, there's actually two items, items and the one is yeah the items and the second one is. Uh, in view item details. I'm not sure which one you are having an error. When you have an error, you can see the error message and it will tell you which line is it. Mm, maybe so I'm thinking maybe your inline keyboard markup you accidentally typed as inline keyboard button. That could be a that, that could be a potential uh, typo. Mm, the earlier one. Maybe you should uh, share a screen. Uh, yeah, maybe after that we can find okay. the breakout okay. room. Yeah, Chaitanya, could you help with that? Yeah. And yes. he or she can share screen. Another question by uh, Mohammed Salam. Actually, what if I never learned Python? Um, there are a lot of resources online that you can uh, find out about Python uh, and learn about Python. I think Python is a relatively simple language to, to pick up. Uh, if you are from NUS, I do know that NUS has like Coursera license, you can learn uh, Python from there. If not, there are a lot of free resources online, such as like Free Code Camp, where you can find courses about Python, or you can just uh, find it on YouTube. I think it's a good way to, to start to learn Python. And one tip would be to find a project that you want to build and then learn that language along with it. So it could be like this bot, right? You want to learn how to build a bot, and then you can use Python. Uh, you can learn how to use Python as you're building this bot. Right, Rainer, Rainer is asked to see the checkout function. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just copy the code until okay. the very last, except the very last part. Mm. Then the very last part is this one. Yeah. And then I think maybe we can wrap, uh, I think this, we can wrap up the workshop and then after that, we can answer some of your questions that you have. Yeah, so. I think this is until five, right? So uh, we will wrap up now and then yep. if uh, yeah we will open to the floor till five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, thank uh thank you everyone for taking time to join and trying to you know build this board. So we'll answer any other questions after this. And then um before we move to the questions, right? We also like we didn't get an opportunity to share much about our team uh, at MasterCard. Uh but there are a lot of uh, career opportunities uh, that MasterCard offers in terms of like internships as well as uh, the launch program, which is like a graduate development develop program for university hires. So both me and Racing are part of that. 
as well. So you can scan this QR code or head to the link down below to find out more about you know uh, career opportunities if you'd like to join Mastercard. Yeah, and then I think that's all. I think Chaitanya will share a link for feedback for this session. As yeah, well as do you, yes. Do you want to talk about anything else about Mastercard? I think it's fine if you do yeah, at this point. Yeah, but I can also share these in the post workshop email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, if not, then I can share my screen. Yeah, I think you can also stop recording so that they can ask questions. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, just let me send the feedback link and then I will stop recording. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. Thanks everyone for joining. I think it was a lot to cover. I This is the first workshop I've attended which covers payments, I think, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, uh, uh, so much thanks for our two instructors, Richin and Zongxian. I think they took a lot of time uh, making sure that everyone was keeping up, spending a lot of time debugging and like spending a lot of brain power as well. So thank you so much. I think everyone, uh, I hope you got to learn a lot. I definitely did. Uh, it would be great if you could fill up the feedback form by scanning the QR code or visiting the link, which is mentioned on the slide. Uh, we take our feedback seriously and any feedback will be useful for the next iteration of the workshop. Uh, yeah, so please fill the feedback form. Uh, we'll also be sending a post-workshop email with the recording in case uh, Richin and Zongxian, you're okay with uploading the recording, mm -hmm. uh, the feedback form, as well as uh, maybe the completed code and slides uh, and any other things that uh, you guys want me to send to the participants. Yeah, uh, let me, so, at this point, I'm going to stop recording. Uh, yep. Uh, thanks, thanks everyone for attending, and I hope you got to learn a lot. All right, let me stop.